Hello everyone, my name is Finding Pepper and welcome to another episode of the Tile Scrolling Platformer Expansion Series, where I will be expanding on a tutorial series made by Griff Patch, link to which will be in the description. Today we will be adding crouch jumping to our Mario game. It's a bit of a shorter topic, so I might even be able to include a few other things in the video with it, but uh, we'll see. So. Firstly, we should see what happens when we try to crouch. Luckily, Griff Patch left us a little thing right here, so we can try it out right here. So let's crouch under this, and as you can see, we get pushed right out when we try to crouch under it. So that's to prevent you getting stuck under the blocks, but we want to get under, stuck under the blocks, and then we'll build a way to get unstuck. Our first stop on our journey will be the Handle Keys Left Right Custom Block. And here you can see if player action equals crouch, then we do this. And we can't turn while crouching, which is good for this system that Griff Patch has right now, but we want to be able to turn left and right while crouching. So we'll bring the Set Key Walk button up here, sorry, block, <laughs> and We'll also get the point and direction block here. That'll just simply allow us to change direction. But if I show the key walk variable here, let me do that right now. You can see most of the time it's zero, unless we're walking. And we don't want Mario to point in direction zero. That would break everything. So we'll have to make sure that the key walk is not zero. And then we'll just slot that in right after here. There we go. So now if we crouch, we should be able to turn left to right. There we go. That's working perfectly. Now let's see what happens when we crouch under this again. <laughs> so, you see that's why he didn't put that in there. But we're going to do that. So, we need that. We're going to be need needing to move left to right. Next, we'll head to Handle Keys Jump Crouch. And we're look and right here, see it says if the down of controls is greater than zero, and then else, if up of controls is greater than zero. Well, we want to jump. We want to be able to jump when we are crouching. So, here's what we'll do. So, in here, just before the, just after the change jumping by one, we'll put in an if else block. And put the current code in the else statement. And this will be, if the player action equals crouch, and then the else will be if it's not crouching. So this will be the code we have right now. Oh, and we can put the jumping outside of it, because that will happen both times. We can actually even put the, if jumping is less than 11 outside here as well, uh, because that will also be the same. So now, the first difference we'll have in this one is that we'll set speed y to 8 instead of 13. And that's just a value I picked because it doesn't really matter what this is, but I just wanted it to be slightly less, so. And then we'll leave the if jumping equals 1, starts on jump. But then we'll put some more in. We'll grab the get tile at block and place it right here after start sound jump. Now the X and Y inputs for this will be X minus 16, so slightly to the left of the player, and Y, whoops, and Y plus 32, so just above the player. Now we'll check, so that's basically the block just slightly above the player and to the left. So, if the tile shape equals hash, 
then we'll want to be able to jump to propel ourselves forward. So we'll check, like I said, if the tile shape equals hash. So, like I said earlier, the direction of the player is always 90 or negative 90. So, if the direction is 90, then we'll change x speed x by 2. And if it's negative 90, then we'll change speed x by negative 2. So that basically means go right if you're facing right, and go left if you're facing left. Alright, so now, we did this, This is, but this is just for the tile slightly up and to the left. Now we also want the tile slightly up and to the right. So... We'll replace the minus 16 with a plus 16. And the code here will be just the same. So we'll leave it as change speed x by direction divided by 45. Now, let's try that out. What do you think is going to happen? Well... As you can see, it's exactly the same result. But, why is that? Well, we didn't change the handle get up block yet. If we look at that, we can see that it changes the speed x by direction divided by negative 200. So basically, it makes you go backwards. And we don't want that anymore, so we can just take that out. And we also have to make sure that this this jumping block is not here, because we don't want to set the jumping to zero. Well, it looks like there's one other thing I forgot to do. we got to move this out of the else here, in player action equals crouch. Because, yes, I think that should be pretty self-explanatory. So, let's try that out again. Perfect, that works really well, actually. So I like that a lot. Now, I think we have the time to squeeze in a few more improvements. So, for the next improvement, we'll have to go into the editor. So, on the generate level, right now we have to place all the end tiles by hand. Now, that's, that's kind of tedious. I'll show you if you want me to. So, I'm just going to reset my level, and then we're going to go all the way over here to the right. And as you can see, we have to place all those um, end tiles by hand. So what I want to do is automate that. So the first thing we'll do is edit this boxed column block. Then we'll add another input and call it air. Click OK. And then we see it has an opening in that. And then we'll just say 2. And then drag the air into where it says add 2 to tile grid in the, def in the block definition. So this will achieve exactly the same thing, but this means we can have different types of air in different uh, columns of the level. So on the end column, we'll want to add a different tile. So let's go into the tiles to see which costume that is. 48 and 49. Also, we should remember that the end box is costume 47. So, we can change this grid width minus 2 to a grid width minus 18. And that's because there are 18 end tiles. So then, or there's 15 end tiles, I suppose, because of the wall and the uh, middle one. So the middle one is 49, and then we can, instead of repeating grid width minus 18, we can just duplicate that, and then re we repeat 15 times, and then add box column 48, or 48 and 49, actually, those are the correct ones. So, we'll play, and then we'll go to... We'll load the level. I'm just using four for now. I'm gonna reset it. Then we'll fly all the way to the right, and we should see the blackness over there. Yes, that is looking beautiful. 
Now, there's one more thing we can do, and that's add the end box. So, we'll use the paint entity box for this. And we need to set the tile index to the correct number. So, we'll set it to um, grid height times the grid width minus 9. And so that will get us to the bottom tile, 9 rows left of the right. Now we want to add 6 to the, or actually I believe 7 to that, so it's a bit higher up. Then we'll just set that at the end there. And then we'll set the chosen brush to 47, which we noted was the end box. And then we'll paint entity. And then after that, we can just set the chosen brush back to 2. All right, let's see, is that going to work? Yes, it is. There's our beautiful unbox right sitting there, waiting for us to collect. Uh, just me jumping into that notices that there's no sound to go along with it. So let's add that. First, we'll go into the sounds part of the sounds sprite. So we'll look for the gold card one. All right, that's the one. Well, we will use that here. Um, so we'll get when I receive Mario level complete. Then we'll stop the other scripts in sprite, and then start sound. Go card one. So let's try it out. Great, that works perfectly. And then we get to the next level and the music resumes like normal. Awesome. Next, we'll turn our attention to the enemy sprite. Gonna look in here and find the tick life block. Alright, here it is. Obviously, you have a slightly longer version of the Take Life because uh, this is uh, a remix of Griff Patch's uh, sample project from episode 16, but I think you can follow along the same way. Okay, so in the else, along with the Touching Mario, we will grab some code from the Goomba script. Just this simple movement code. We can take off the touching Mario. We'll just move that up here and then bring it over to the take life block. So this is pretty good. I'm going to make it slightly faster though. So speed x less than 2, speed x greater than negative 2, and then 0.25 and negative 0.25. Go and we can also delete the set costume. There goes our mushroom. Awesome. All right. Also, there's one more really quick thing that I'd like to do. And that is update the set type block. So we're going to edit it. Then we're, I want to add size. So we can say size and then size. And now we have this size here. So all of these we want to be 200. 
but you can play around making bigger enemies. Also, of course, you have to define that in the set in the definition for this block. We'll just set size to size. And of course, this should work exactly the same. Oh, you see that prana is exactly the same size as it should be. And so is that Goomba. But, if we made this, say, 400, and of course change the heights, they just double what they normally are, and we'll have a large Goomba. Yup, that is a big Goomba. So, you can have a lot of fun with this, make big enemies, and whatever you feel like. Or even little tiny enemies. So, that will be it for me today, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's a bit different from the other ones. It's, it's just like a few general improvements, but anyway, have a nice rest of your day, and see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Oh, and real quick, if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, there's a link to the playlist down in the description of this video that contains all the tile scrolling platform expansion episodes so far. And of course, stay tuned for new ones. Have a nice day.